Hello friends, welcome to Dream Music School. Today we are going to learn how to calibrate our electric or acoustic guitar to solve one of the most frequent problems in guitarists. The fret, which is a defect that the strings produce a very annoying vibration when playing, caused by playing with one of the frets that is not well leveled with one or more of the frets. To perform the calibration and correct this error, we will first take a ruler that is in very good condition and we will place it on the fingerboard making it touch all the frets. Next we are going to use a sheet of ordinary plain paper and we are going to try to insert it verifying where there are hollow spaces and where there are convex spaces to determine the curvature of the fingerboard. If the sheet of paper easily enters several places it means that the fingerboard is not straight and on the contrary it is concave and if the sheet cannot easily enter some sectors it means that the fingerboard is convex that is in the shape of a bridge. For this we are going to adjust the sole and try to lead the fretboard as straight as possible making the sheet of paper not fit through any part of the ruler nor on the top of the fretboard nor on the bottom, much less in the center. This adjustment is made by means of a Bristol wrench or, as it is also known, a hexagonal wrench of the type L. We are going to introduce it at the top of the mast where there is a small hole that is designed to precisely insert this key and we are going to rotate the sole very delicately. Since it is a process that if done wrong could damage the fingerboard and therefore the mast of the guitar. Later we will recheck with a ruler and with a sheet of paper that it can no longer be inserted for any space, thus ensuring that the fingerboard is already straight. If the sheet of paper cannot enter it means there are no cavities between the ruler and the frets. If necessary you can readjust the sole until the fingerboard is as straight as possible. In this case we turn the sole to the right side when we want the fingerboard to reduce the curvature and it turns to the left side when we want to increase the curvature on the fingerboard. Once we are sure that the fingerboard is already completely straight, we will proceed to carry out the next step, which consists of covering the entire diapason with masking tape or car tape, except for the frets. Once we have reached the end of the fingerboard where the frets are getting narrower, we are going to use a knife to cut the excess ribbons and make sure that it does not cover the fret. Remember that the only thing we must cover is the fingerboard wood, the frets must be left outdoors. The next step will be to paint the surface of each of the frets with a marker that has an ink very similar to the color of the fretboard. Finish this process. Now we are going to take a 600 sandpaper and a wooden block that is totally straight on one side. This wooden block should measure approximately 30 centimeters long, 6 or 7 centimeters wide. We are going to wrap the sandpaper in this wooden block and we are going to make long movements through the fingerboard without repeating. In order to remove the paint from the frets and being able to observe where there is more unevenness, the frets that fade faster will be those that were higher than the others. This process must be done very gently, trying not to sand the fingerboard more than 8 times as this could adversely affect the size of the frets. Next, let's move on to the most important part of this whole process. The leveling of the frets. For this leveling of the frets we are going to need three small rulers or as in my case three sharp blades. One that is 12 centimeters, one that is 8 and another that is approximately 5 centimeters long. And most importantly that they have one of their edges perfectly straight. This is indispensable. Once we have these tools we are going to take the sharp blades or the largest ruler and we are going to start measuring the first three frets. And what we are going to do is put the blade with edge on the first three frets and we are going to balance it from one side to the other to see if there is any unevenness. If the blade swings to the right side or to the left side it means that the middle fret is raised higher than the other two. 
as indicated in the following image and therefore we must file it with a sandpaper number 600 in a wooden block until the blade stops swinging meaning that the first three frets are already level. This guarantees that the string will not upset these frets. Now we are going to carry out the same process but we are going to start from the second fret of the guitar checking the following three. In this case, the blade does not balance for either side, which means that the following third frets are level as indicated in the following image. Therefore, we are now going to check from the third fret of the guitar down. In this case the blade does not balance for either side either, which means that this fret is also correct. Therefore, we move on to the next, we will now start from the 4th fret of the guitar downwards. At this point the blade does swing to a great extent for both sides. Which means the fret in the middle is higher than the other two. Therefore, we must sand it with the 600 sandpaper until the blade stops moving, which means that the 3 frets are already level. Later we will continue doing the same process but now from the 5th fret then from the 6th then from the 7th, 8th etc. Until finishing the entire fingerboard of the guitar, sanding with the sandpaper the frets that are necessary, until obtaining an optimal level that will guarantee that the strings will not fret and therefore will also allow us to lower the height of the strings to the maximum, thus obtaining a much more comfortable guitar to play and therefore of better quality. For the next step, we are going to need a small wooden block that measures between 5 and 6 cm long by 4 wide. In one of its edges on the thin side of the wood block, we need to make a hole as shown in the concave image and along the length of the wood block in the shape of the fret. We are going to use this hole to give it a rounded shape that the frets have at the top. For this we are going to take with a 600 sandpaper and we are going to roll it through the wooden block and we are going to secure it with a little tape. Subsequently we are going to sand each of the frets making them go into the slot of this small block of wood that we have prepared. In this process we must be as careful as possible to give the correct shape to the fret without having to sand too much. It is recommended to give 3 or 4 passes along the fret making sure that it is inserted into the slot of the wooden block that we prepare and then using one of the edges of the wooden block we will give about two passes on the sides of the fret to remove any amount of marker that may have remained in these parts. We will carry out this process with a lot of patience and throughout the fret for making sure that the frets return to the rounded shape that they had at the beginning. In addition to providing them with a very shiny appearance caused by the polishing done with the 600 sandpaper. Finally we only have to remove all the paper tape clean the fingerboard again and place the strings to enjoy our calibrated guitar. This will provide us with more comfort when playing since we can lower the height of the strings a little more. I hope the video has been to your liking and above all useful. Do not forget to subscribe, like the video and comment. Until next time.